And literally the collar has saved dogs lives. And I'm not even joking. It is completely legitimate. Why? It's because people can actually control their dog, walk their dog regularly. Um, they can control their dog when it's trying to lunge and try to hurt other people and other dogs. And the options are, we don't control the dog and the dog doesn't go out. We don't control the dog and the dog hurts somebody or kills something. Um, and then the dogs die from mm. euthanasia because we can't control the dog. So it has literally, and I'm not even joking, saved dogs' lives. And people have come to me. Like I remember there was a box across Mastiff that I saw last year. And the lady said straight up, she goes, I've seen five trainers. You are literally his last hope. Mm. If this doesn't work, he's done. And I'm he's like, on, he's on the wrong end of a needle. I'm like, far out. That is like intense pressure for me. But look, I told him like, that's pretty intense for me. I'm going to tell you what it is as if you didn't even say that to me and we're going to do the best thing. She was a small lady. The dog was like literally like probably even heavier than her. And maybe it wasn't the wrong uh, at first. You can see it and be like, why does that lady have that dog? Good evening, brother. Good to see you again. Good evening. We're back. We're back. We're doing another Zoom. We've been pressed for time again. <laughs> That's cool. Story of our lives, man. Yeah. Next time we're in, in studio and we're going to, we've got a guest lined up. So that should be cool. Mm. I just got back tonight from just before from um, doing a shaping session with my friends Labrador for the oh yeah I was gonna ask you, how did that go? so it's it's going good we're still in the like it's hard you know because he's not my dog so I can only get so much access to him mm, um, but we're we're making we're making progress so it's good where are you at the moment um well, I'm still teaching him the hold mm -hmm. so good perfect yeah. have fun with it sometimes yeah. better to go with the flow rather than push it as well especially if you haven't got that much access to him like every time you see him sort of that's thing, it so. yeah and he's like that's he's cool. never been he's never ever ever in his life been shaped so even that just teaching him how to for take, sure take that sort of direction is it's all a learning process for me as much as it is for him exactly it's good the topic of the day the tools we use tools of the Our trade equipment Perfect. We've got a list and I'm sure this list can just keep going, but we just stopped at some of the basics. Mm. Um, well, I guess the first one we have on the list here, we'll just talk about it is the harness. And yeah, I guess there's many heaps of different types of harnesses out there. So I guess we can talk about some of the different types. It's very hard, obviously, this is an, an audio platform. And even um, if you do watch any of the video, I think as much as we can try to explain it, obviously, Maybe one day we should do a visual one of all of this equipment. And I guess I did one ages ago about equipment actually, but this one's probably a little bit more thorough and maybe any questions that come up or we can explore more. So the harness is what we use for puppies or I use primarily for puppies up to six months old. And we want to, we want to use a harness on a puppy because we don't, I, I prefer not to walk a puppy on a collar. Um, now harnesses that clip on the back of the dog means that it encourages them to pull. Yeah, and let's talk about harnesses. the mechanics of that, eh? So when a when a dog pulls into a harness, it actually compresses their ribs, right? So they actually quite enjoy that feeling. We'll think about what does a police dog or a or a sled dog use when they're when they're working, like a tracking dog? They work exactly. on a harness. It they well, love the sensation would... of being pulled of pulling into a harness. Yeah, well, harnesses were developed for dogs to pull sleds originally. Exactly. Um, so, because obviously you don't see no, no huskies pulling, pulling sleds with their collars. I probably wouldn't make it very far, so, um, but the, but the primary function of it is of course to, for safety. And also it has good function because the, the pressure of, of the, uh, of the harness is sitting on the chest, which causes opposition reflex. The dog leans into the pressure and that encourages them to pull. So that's why we want to put on a puppy because we, want them to pull and carry on to build some confidence and to, you know, think about the environment and also, so we're not crushing his neck. And also we don't put on the puppy because I don't want to desensitize a puppy to pulling on his neck. So when we start talking about other collars, um, it has a better functional use. And one harness that I really don't like is a step in harness because dogs always get out of a step in harness. So step in means that the puppy literally has to step into it and it clips up. Um, on their back and I guess the reason why they pull out of it really easily is because it's not sitting on them like there's not many points of contact and when are they the ones usually... that have that kind of really padded looking thing at the front it almost no, looks a different like a chest one. plate like a you know it's different the step in one is it looks it literally like kind of looks like 
it doesn't look like a bra, but like how a bra would go on, right? Like yeah. if, if a dog would wear one is that it only goes, there's only two holes over its legs and then it clips on the back. So nothing's really sitting around the dog's neck. Mm. Um, where the ones that you're saying they have, it's like padded and the dog's head can go through it. And then it has a chest plate and then we clip on behind their, their, their legs there. Yeah. And those ones can be, so that's more of a H harness. H harnesses literally look like a H, but I don't like those um, ones that you just mentioned generally because there's no adjustability around the shoulders. Mm. So it's all sitting on the dogs. Um, like it, it can only adjust around the belly. A lot of those ones that you get and a lot of them are like a cheaper style and mainly dogs get out of the harness when they put the brakes on, they put their legs out forward because they don't want to walk anymore, whether they're scared or whether they want to smell something behind or get to someone behind them. So then they put the brakes on we pull against it. And then what happens is when their elbows go go into that position, their elbows are in line with their ribs and then it just goes and just slips right off like a t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Defeats the purpose. So why do you think so many dogs are on harnesses in the first place? Like what's your theory? My, my theory is I think people have been sold a bit of a lemon in, in terms of, like you know maybe maybe not so much flat collars but i think they they falsely assume that it is the safest or the most com- surely i mean i'm sure it would be the most comfortable but they i think they've also been sold that it's perhaps really safe in terms of like not causing any injury to you know quote unquote injury to the dog you know, oh you shouldn't put a collar on a dog it puts stress on their spine on their neck that kind of thing mm Look, I think if someone is completely ignorant to any form of training and don't do anything like zero, then put them on a harness because yeah, they'll get pulled around and it certainly doesn't teach a dog to walk on a loose lead very effectively. And, and, and of course a dog can pull and jump on other people and things like that. But the, I think the worst damage that could happen from that is like low bearing pressure on their hips and on their joints because they're pulling a lot. But, you know, that compared to a dog pulling on a flat collar or even on a, on any collar for that matter, any collar that has, that isn't being used with correct technique, then yeah, of course the dog can get like a collapse trachea. Trachea. Yeah. Trachea. Trachea. Yeah. Um, yeah, Nookie had that. Neck issues. Yeah. When she was heaps small, when we first got her, um, she'd been walking on a flat collar. So any pressure went on her neck, she would like start coughing. So I had her on a, on a harness and. So we'll talk about the harness that I recommend in a sec, but we, I put on a harness and now I have her on a collar, no dramas, but she doesn't ever put any real tension on it. And every time that she, happens to be a bit of tension on it, there's no coughing or choking. So obviously she's healed or gotten better or whatever, or, and also she's not pulling on it. So, so I haven't heard of coughing in years. So, um, but yeah, so harnesses that if, if in, like, I think, and you're right, people were sold harnesses because, Hey, look, it's better for the dog and safer and blah, blah, blah. You're not going to choke them and hurt them and all that stuff. And it's true, but I like people too. And when people get pulled over all the time and getting dragged down the street, mm. that, that annoys me because people get injuries and they fall over and their dog jumps on other dogs and get into fights and dogs slip out of shitty harnesses. And, and there's, there's a list that goes on, but I reckon, so put it this way, my grandma's 94 years old. I am not, teaching her to train her dog and her dog is completely sweet with anyone else. But the truth is she, um, a little Pomeranian, um, barks at other dogs when she sees them. So, um, so I know that's the case. And I know that I'm not teaching my, my my grandma. I'm happy that she's walking her, her dog. Right. So, so we put her on a front clip harness. So the harness on the front, and this is what I recommend. So we first start off with puppies, like little puppies on the back of the harness, let them pull and carry on. But I just saw a couple of puppies in there, about five and a half months, a Staffy and a Frenchie. And we've been clipping on the front today. They pull in front and like, as soon as they go to pull, they get pulled off balance. Mm, they and in that way, they're- center of gravity too, don't they? It's so good, right? So you put a pressure on just before they get in front and then they start to understand, you know, it kind of sucks when I pull and it's better when I'm walking next to it. So I don't really advocate heaps of like loose lead walking for puppies. And I've mentioned that heaps of times it's more, but if we can manage it and start to build some foundation, especially for these puppies that are going to start to get older, the last thing I want is for them to get desensitized to wearing a collar where they, then when we do put like a martingale collar on them, then they, um, they, we have to work harder to teach them not to pull. So 
I don't want the expectation of a puppy to walk on a loose lead under six months old because I think it's just too young. There's mm. too many too many things happening for them to understand consequences for their behaviors and it's too, too complicated. I think it's much better if we just show them that when we're out walking, stay on my left-hand side. And, you know, we did a whole episode about walking puppies, so you can check that out. So front clip harness, I use the H harnesses. I either use the ROGS one, ROGS H harness, or the Spawn Ultimate Control Harness. Um, I've been using even better because it has a proper option of clipping on the front. Rogues have got a new set of harnesses coming out too. I haven't properly trialed them. So you, you guys can check that out as well. Um, but stay away from sleep, um, from stepping harnesses and those ones that you get from like, you know, the general stores that, you yeah. know, they look, they look pretty. They've got heaps of cool patterns and look very nice. But in terms of if you want to keep your dog on the, on the lead, then make sure if you're going to put that on, it is tight and it fits on good. The problem with like a Labradoodle puppy is that that thing's like five and a half months old and he's skinny as, but like long. So if it's if there's no adjustability around the shoulders, it fits nicely around the belly, but then this thing's really big around its head and they try to get out and they can, they're super slender. And that's why you don't want to be in those moments when your dog's putting the brakes on and you're wearing a dodgy harness like that don't be trying to drag her across the street when the lights are about to go green for the cars. Mm. That's where it happens. You're like, we've got to go. And the dog's like off the lead and they're chasing well, a yeah. dog in the You leash and your, your collar or your harness. It's like the analogy of a, uh, the tires on a car. You've only got, that's literally the only thing that's connecting you to the road, right? So that's, that's the totally. only thing that's connecting you to your dog and, and stopping mm -hmm. your dog from potentially running into traffic or another dangerous sure. situation. So important. So yeah, so look, I guess to answer your question, um, I think it probably is like if you, again, with no technique, just a person with a dog on the lead and they're like, a, like Mr. my grandma. Mrs. Smith, yeah. Yeah. And look, and to be honest, the front clip harness actually works great for Flora. She doesn't pull, she doesn't carry on. Which is on. your, She's your got, grandma's dog, yeah? So my grandma's dog, yeah. yeah. And um, no problem, no dramas. So my grandma's happy. She can walk her dog. She walks her dog twice a day up and down the street, a couple of blocks here, like halfway up the street and back. You're 94 years old and you're walking. Awesome. I love it. Um they both get a good Black little workout out of it. It's good. Yeah, She's got a free personal trainer. Exactly right. And, you know, she gets her dog out twice a day. People that are in the best condition aren't walking their dogs twice a day. So She, she <laughs> probably she might not be walking otherwise without the dog. Actually, there's a neighbor here in my... Uh, in my street and same deal i think she just turned 90 and she's got a little like a little aussie terrier and same mm -hmm. thing i see her walking it every day without fail and i very much doubt whether she would leave her house mm -hmm. you know other than when her kid like her daughter comes to visit her other than the dog that's the only reason she has to get out and walk around the block exactly exactly right it gives them purpose it gives them life and my grandma's like the best present i've ever had in my whole life is flora and and um and that's so good and she's she, she full thinks about it anyway. Um, so we'll talk about the flat collar, I guess. Flat collar is a pretty standard um, tool to or a bit of equipment that yeah. most dog owners have. So flat um, collar I, is just the standard collar, really. Standard flat collar. Yeah. You can get one that clips on like a, like a belt would or there's others that clip on with like a plastic buckle. If you're going to put a flat collar on, go for a old school, put, the, put it through the belt sort of buckle. Yeah. What do you call that? What yeah, like a it's like a belt use. buckle where you where you you feed it through and pull it back, and there's a That's like it. a prong that that yeah, like you like you'd have a normal belt around your waist. Exactly, where like plastic buckle, like look, plastic buckle can be good, but over time, sun damage, water damage, it just it gets wear and tear. You know, um, you can't always rely on that, and it may snap at the worst time. Um, I don't personally walk my dogs, even Spades, he's almost ten, and he's not on a flat collar because, um, I did put a flat collar on him. I'm um, like last year and there was one time where my client because sometimes my clients have to walk my dog and something happened he was like doing a poo or something and she didn't realize and she was walking and the kind of the collar kind of slipped halfway off his head mm. and I'm like no nah, I keep it we will talk about the Martin go in a moment but I had That's the, the old goal. mercy fit isn't it too loose too loose and I could have had a tighter but I thought but the martingale can be really like loose and then when the pr pressure goes on it closes in and so it's all good yeah. so I personally don't. I'm not against flat collars, completely sweet. Um, but I don't use it for training because I have, we have training collars for that. Um, flat collars should be on a dog when your dog is not wearing, like if he's just at liberty at home, have it on. So for two reasons, we can have his details on his tag attached to it. Number two is your dog goes around at the front door, you've got something to grab. Yep. No collar on, what are you grabbing? You're going to grab your dog's fur, his tail, his leg, and he's probably going to bite you. So having the collar on is just for good safety as well. Um, and 
I don't like to walk them on it because dogs can slip out of it. As I said, even with spades, like, you know, you can have it on tighter and it do- and it's less likely to slip off. Um, but I'm a big fan of martingale collars. So, and let's talk about why the flat collar is perhaps not as great for say teaching or for using as a training tool. Like say, for example, yeah, like like I'm sure sleep heaps walk. of trainers mm-hmm. will disagree with me, but I'm just talking about my experience and, and the way that I teach. What do they is, say? You put three dog trainers in a room. The only, the only thing two of them will agree on is how the third one is wrong. That's usually the, that's the human condition. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's true, man. The dog trainer oh, look, condition. Uh, yeah, look, I think with um, with the flat collar, I guess the reason why I don't like is because if I'm going to put pressure on that dog, it's only sitting in one spot on the dog's neck and that's usually opposite to where you're pulling. Usually people pull backwards, which means um, the, coll- the pressure is going to go on the dog's throat. And, uh, you know, everyone talks about the check chain being the choker collar. I think the you know, I, I, I use a joke that flat collars are the the be- the most intense choke collars because mm. more dogs are choking on flat collars than they are on check chains. Yeah. Um, in my opinion. Being misused, yeah. Of course, you know, so it can work really well. And some dogs only wear a flat collar and over time they just learn and some dogs are lucky like that. And other dogs, they pull so hard that choking is completely normal for walking and their neck has just become desensitized and conditioned, strong muscles around the neck and the dog just pulls down the street. So, um, so that's why I don't like flat collars and dogs can back out of them pretty easily. They slip out of it. Yeah. And, and people fit okay, them too talk- loose, right? They, they, yeah. they, they, um, you know, because the, when you're putting it on the furs there and you're, you sort of, you know, misguidedly assume that, that it's tight enough around the fur, but really you need it tight around the actual neck with the skin, right? And then you, the skin it, is, it's yeah. too tight. Uh, sorry, yes, too loose. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and then you have to put it that tight and the dog's uncomfortable. Then you forget to loosen up when you get home from, and then, the, you know, it's just, it sucks. So let's talk about the martingale. So we can then talk about the flat collar and make the difference. So a martingale collar, training collar, obedience collar, um, there's so many names for it, but um, it's basically, you know what? I can try to explain it. I can't bother. Just Google it. it it's it's like nylon. halfway between a flat collar and a check chain, basically, right? It's like three yeah, quarters has- flat collar and then it has a chain portion in between two D clips. Yeah, the D clips. Um, and there's no break in the collar. So you put it on by loosening it. So there's actually, once it's fitted properly, because of the way it's designed, there's actually no way for the dog to slip. The- well, there's some that you can get that buckle and things like that to make it right. easy. I don't want, I, I prefer, uh, so I use and sell the ROGS ones. Um, Jason Furman is, is um, he's probably going to be listening and then bagging me because he's like, what the fuck? I can make a probably better one than that. Well, then make me some better ones, bro, and I'll use them. Um, so, um, and I know you're listening and you're definitely listening to this one too, for sure. So hello, brother. You're a good man. Um, so I guess the one that I use is um, the ROGS one because once you put that on, so, the, so the, let's talk about the safety. The safety side of a martingale collar is that, as we said before, even if it's on loose, the dog tries to back out of it. The 2D clips through the chain close together and the dog is harder for it to get out of, get off the head. I don't use it loose. I put it on tighter so that I want to keep the collar high on the dog's neck. Let me go for the whole spill. So the reason why we don't use a flat collar is because when the dog pulls, it sits too low on the neck. The lower the neck, the stronger it is. So the dog leans into it and then gets desensitized. And also it encourages him to pull through calm, through opposition, opposition reflex. reflex. Yeah. And also when the collar's down low, just like the harness, we can't control the head. If you can't control the dog's head, you can't control the dog's body. So, um, so then it's harder. You're trying to control him by pulling him rather than manipulating his head through training technique. So, um, and also the dogs back out of it where the martingale collar, we want to put it up high under the jaw and behind the ears for two reasons. As soon as he pulls in a little bit of pressure on it, he feels it's uncomfortable. He pulls back, we release the pressure and then we can reward. But having the collar up high also, we can control the dog's head, which means a little bit of pressure means that I can control the head and minimum effort for maximum results is so much better than using all that pressure. And then the dog still staring at the other dog. So controlling the head is very important. Also, when you put the collar on, you must make sure that the two side rings do not touch when you apply the pressure. So there's a clear gap. So it's evenly distributing the pressure and the whole neck, where if it's loose and the two rings are touching, 100% of the pressure sitting in one spot. Yeah. And so you test that by you pull the O-ring up, which is the, the bit on the metal chain. And then at the point where the O-ring is like extended or pulled up, the the two D rings should still have like two fingers space between them basically. Yeah, so exactly. you use the the um adjuster on the fabric part of the collar to That's tighten right. it to the point where that you have that space always. 
Mm -hmm. at a minimum. Definitely. When training and teaching a dog loosely walking and, and use for, for pressure and correction. Um, the only reason why there's a chain on it, well, you can get ones that don't have a chain and it's just a nylon yeah, like web. A fabric, yeah, like Chloe's ones yeah. that, because she's so little, right? She, her neck's tiny. Exactly. And a lot of them, like rogs don't, like they've actually started making smaller um, martingale collars finally. And they're awesome, but they are not um, chain. They have a web, like a nylon webbing. Mm -hmm. But the chain is there for the only, for two reasons, is that you make, like you pull it quickly. I wish I had one on me right now. If I pull it quickly, it makes a noise, like a, like the chain making a noise against yeah. the metal. You get a and that's, and that, yeah, yeah the dog understands. Yeah. He hears the sound. He understands that it's pressures occurring. And also if you do give it a sharp pop, it doesn't sound very nice. So it adds to the correction. And then um, even if you have it on loose with the two rings touching, the dog can't back out of it. So spades, when he wears it, he doesn't have to, we don't need it tight because he understands no. the walk next no. to me. So, but I have it on so that if he tries to back out in any emergency situation, we need grand parade, the very busy road. Um, if he tries to get out of it for any retarded reason, if a dog's trying to attack him or, or something's happened and he stepped on a bee and he hurt himself, I don't know. Things Shit happen. Happens. We Why don't we want train? to get off that. So way. we have it when we don't need, when we need it exactly right definitely so that's the martingale collar um anything that you think i should add i think we covered most of it um, should I just talk about like more of like the training concept is yeah. basically you know i, I mean think... you you use martingale is kind of like your bread and butter right i've noticed that so you, you obviously you've come to the point where you've you've decided that that is on the balance of things it's a really good tool to use it's the benchmark it's one that we if, if your dog's over six months old generally yeah. we're using it now, look, as I said before, like I had a martingale collar on my grandma's dog, but she wasn't using it properly and the dog was pulling in and I can't explain it to her. And, yeah. you know, for so many reasons, first of all, my grandma understands English, but not like she, if she listened sure. to this, I don't know if she would understand what everything sure. of what we're saying. You, yeah. Don't overcomplicate can, it, right? Yeah. yeah. And then I can speak Greek, but I can't talk specifics, yeah. like super deep specifics. Yeah. So then my communication barrier is not there and then try to show it to her. And then also she's 94 years old, so she's not yeah. nimble. So, yeah. Um, so in that case, that and also I found that, and I was actually pretty surprised that the front clip harness worked the best. So I'm, I'm very open. Some people want to really stick to a certain um, tool. I'll give them the best of what I can, even though based. I could advise. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so the, the check chain is not called a choke collar. I hate it when it's called a choker. I guess more traditional people, old school people call it the choker because that's what it was always called. And people but who I are trying to bad mouth it call it that as well. That, yeah, that too. Well, like, I don't like calling it a choker because in my opinion, I'm, the technique is not to choke him. You're not supposed to choke the dog. Um, you can choke the dog on it for sure. But how I use it is that, well, first of all, let's talk about the check chain is that the reason why I generally don't use it in training, whether you can agree with that or not, is that usually, first of all, to buy good ones, I prefer that we get proper stainless steel. I mean, a no, proper chrome, chrome ones, like the chrome plated stainless yeah. steel are better than the ones that you get from like the general pet store because they're like some cheap Asian shit that is just not put together properly. The metal is just not running nicely. It you comes down the to pressure. the welding in the links. So I think um, so, when I was on NDTF, then, Glenn was explaining. I think it's like, I don't know anything about welding, but I think it's like, I think they call it spot welding. Basically one, one is like a really, you know, the cheap ones would have the spot welding, I guess, or whatever the weakest welding technique is because it's cheap and it's quicker to make mm, but interesting like we said your collar is your tires on the road so you don't fucking mess with that you don't buy cheap shit well like a lot of the the the, the links are actually too fat so when you go to like pull it it doesn't like it doesn't slide nicely mm. but like the home springer chrome ones they're sick you they're like the pull standard. it and it's just yeah. so nice it's just it releases nicely german yeah properly. home springer yeah totally yeah. Um, but like, obviously look, I'm, I'm sure, sorry, I said Asian. I'm sure you can get Asian. We have Asian really, listeners. No, it's not about that, but yeah, you it's know, not like yeah, it, all the equipment bad. we, we use 90% of it is made in China. Having said that there's a massive, you know, gamut. There's the good, amazing stuff that's made in China. And then there's the cheap stuff. You get what you pay for with like with anything exactly. else. Usually when it comes to dog training equipment, like good ones, it's either coming from like somewhere like Germany or somewhere like America yeah. generally. Yeah. Um, but again, you can make it in Australia, you can make it in China, wherever, and it can be good. You can make shit anywhere. 
Exactly. Good but the ones bad. that we're generally getting at the pet stores, when you could drive down the street and get it, it's coming from just mass produced crap. And it just doesn't, it doesn't feel good when you, the actual function of it, when you put it on and must, there's a right way of putting it on. There's a yeah. wrong way of putting it on. And there's like no way that I'm going to even try to explain it right now. Um, I can try. I can tell go you. Ahead. Like, go, okay, do so it. this do is it. how Glenn explained it to us. Um, actually, it was Kana. So when you have the check chain, I'm going to try and explain this for people who aren't even <laughs> like there's no video, like if you're on, if you're just on the podcast, right? So, so it's basically two O-rings with a chain, right? The, when you fit it, the correct way is such that the chain should look like a P where the, the like long part of the letter P goes over the top of the dog's head and under their neck. So you shouldn't have the long part going under the dog's neck and and then back over towards you so basically it's my understanding is like want to lock it in correct well like it, it basically means that the way you set it sort of sets which side of you the dog should be on that's right okay, right so, so if the dog's in the you, yeah if you, you've got it if, because if you set it one way and then you have then the dog's on the other side of you i think you might, is that right you might end up getting okay, listen, reversed i'll explain it like this if your dog's on your left hand side you make the check chain you look at it if it looks like a p p for it's proper correct. yeah and then you want to go from as you're looking at it you move it onto the dog's neck like you put it there where if it's a q when you're looking at it and it looks like a q when you put that on the rings coming from underneath the neck and then as you said coming back towards you which means yeah. when you put pressure onto it and then you let go it's more likely to stay there yeah it ratchets and you- it becomes a ratchet so yeah, you don't you, you want to you end up you do end up choking the dog because when you release the pressure it doesn't release the it doesn't release all the way where you want it to as soon as you put it on you let it go and it comes off. so basically when the the chain's on it's the ring and then it's running down under the neck as you said back over okay cool that makes sense it makes sense when you know it and you think it about is it. a bit hard to i'm sure there's like a whole bunch of videos and if yeah, you really want go on youtube video, and, and search for it <laughs> Or hit me up if you if anyone actually needs to see it. Let me know. When it's on, when the check chain's on, you apply pressure. You only want one fistful um, length between the end of where, where the dog's neck is and where the ring is where you've attached the lead. So when you apply the pressure, not super tight, just as soon as there's contact onto the dog, you only want that one fistful. Yeah, so you, sh- you shouldn't have like a foot of excess chain coming off to the no. to where it attaches to the collar. I see this all the time. You'll see people buy They've got like a tiny little dog and they've bought this massive fucking check chain. And like there's seriously like 30 centimeters of chain bef- between yes. the neck and where the clip, the, the leash clip attaches, which is way too much. Mm-hmm. It should only be the fi- the width of your fist, right? Sorry, yeah, so. I didn't quite <laughs> there you go. All right. Siri's going watching. Someone's listening. Siri's listening. <laughs> Siri, you freak. Um, and when you, um, or with a check chain, why do you, don't you want so much length is because you don't want it to go loose and the dog gets out of it. Yeah. And also when you put the pressure on, it should be on off. Like it should be able to put on within even like just rolling your wrist. Milliseconds, yeah. It should be just on off as using for pressure or even giving a sharp correction. It should be pop, not a crank a boom. And then you put your hand and your hand end up over your head trying to do these big, it just doesn't work that way. So look, the reason... I don't use check chains because people aren't going to use it correctly. It's harder to get. The reason why it's harder to get good check chains, in my opinion, if I want to stock for all my clients is that like you they go every sizes. inch. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm tried, adjustable. I've, back in the day, I did it. I bought all of them and then I had, and then like, you know, like I need a shop. Like I can't yeah, have that. Yeah. It just doesn't it's, work. Yeah, and also it's not practical. The, I th- it's we're not try- just sitting here trying to explain it. it. It's pretty obvious that it's, it's like for such a simple like it's, if people don't know what it is, it's literally a length of chain with two O-rings. But for yeah. something so simple, it can. It, it, there's so many variables. So it, it look, it, and I'm fully for it. It work if you use it correctly. It works, but also that can work with a Martin Gal collar as well. So um, now I know the check chain can be more, more in um, a little, a lot more precise and and when used correctly. But again, I have to stock so many of it and then people don't do it right. They put upside down. Oh, sorry, I didn't get it. I didn't know how important it was. And I just, in my experience, doing it with everyday pet owners, it was just, for me, I couldn't explain it enough for it to be useful and Keep it practical. simple, stupid, right? Yeah. So Martingale, which then I guess we can talk about the prong collar, which is like, oh, dun, dun, dun. The devil's We're tool. The prong collar. Um, so... I love the prong collar. I think the prong collar is 
a real, and we're gonna like trigger so many people. So just, just for all the up. like, just for all the um four three people that get triggered, just remember our email address is um info at uh life with your dog. No, it's life with your dog podcast at gmail dot com. We're always just open emails. for our emails. Let's always. just have a chat. You don't have to put it out and like freak it out. It's all good. Let's talk about it. So the prong collar is. Um, and I use the Home Springer prom collar. Ever, never ever use any other brand. Um, I've seen cheaper brands that have. Um, uh, my, my clients have said that they've fallen apart and stuff. So don't go to the, um, don't try to get a cheap one. The, it does literally look like what it sounds like. It is a collar that has prongs on it. You can check it out when you look at it. It probably looks like some medieval torture device. It mm. does look pretty intense. When I first saw it, I'm like, what in the fuck am I looking at? I get it. However, why was it created in my opinion? And of course, I'm fully happy for anyone to educate me further, but for two reasons. Number one is that you cannot choke a dog on a prong collar. It, you just can't do it. There's no way that you're blocking the windpipe. Number one. Number two is that it's used for strong dogs, powerful dogs that, um, that have handlers that may not be as strong or don't want to put as much pressure on the dog to stop the dog from pulling um, and for using it for other training application. It can also be used in um, to add like in terms of like sport dog. And I have like to very activation. limited understanding. Yeah. Yeah, you want to activate the dog. You want to like um, get him into a state of um, arousal and frustration. And that could be used in that. But look, for agitation, I don't use any of that. Obviously I use it mainly for usually, and this isn't always the case, but usually smaller female clients with the strong, German Shepherd, Great Dane, um, and it can be even like it could be any any dog really, mm. but usually it's those bigger, larger dogs that big people... dog, small person. Now there's sometimes where we have we've used um, prong collars with like just an average big strong guy with uh, with an average strong dog. So the irony of a prong anyone... collar as well is the dog is totally in control of the amount of negative re- or like the amount of pressure that's that's being placed on its neck. The same with a slip lead. The same with you know, these other well, tools, it's like, yeah, you, with you all could yank and crank a dog on a flat collar all day long. And you, you can smack to. a dog with your hands. It doesn't rolled up newspaper with the either. end of the leash. Like, are we going to ban yeah, fucking flat course. leashes as well? So, yeah, it, yeah. it is a tool of negative reinforcement. Um, well, yes. Exactly. Which a lot of the time the dog is in control of that. Well, look, like, obviously, let, let's talk about it. Look, obviously, you're going to see some photos if you start looking on Facebook and, like, dogs with holes in their neck. Just so you know, um, with all the experience that I've used with prong collars and I've been using them for years and um, with my clients and and it's hard. It's hard to talk about this sh- this shit um, out loud because people don't understand. They're ignorant, they're arrogant about it. And and literally, the collar has saved dogs' lives and I'm not even joking. It is completely legitimate. Why? It's because people can actually control their dog, walk their dog regularly. Um, they can control their dog when it's trying to lunge and try to hurt other people and other dogs. And the options are we don't control the dog and the dog doesn't go out. We don't control the dog and the dog hurts somebody or kills something. Um, and then the dogs die from mm. euthanasia because we can't control the dog. So it has literally, and I'm not even joking, saved dogs lives. And people have come to me. Like I remember there was a box across Mastiff that I saw last year. And the lady said straight up, she goes, I've seen five trainers. You are literally his last hope. Mm. If this doesn't work, he's done. And I'm he's like, on, he's on the wrong end of a needle. I'm like, far out. That is like intense pressure for me. But look, I told him like, that's pretty intense for me. I'm going to tell you what it is as if you didn't even say that to me. And we're going to do the best thing. She was a small lady. The dog was like, literally like probably even heavier than her. And maybe it wasn't the wrong, uh, like, at first you can see it and be like, why does that lady have that dog? And you can't judge that. We show well, the But by the time you show up, you'll be on that point anyway. So it, it's not really a question yeah. that needs to be asked. Exactly. Yeah, and the dog will bite and attack another dog, 100%. So first session, I'm like, well, look, we're not going to mess around. I'm not going to try to put a mind. They had a check chain on the dog, and the dog had been desensitized. I'm like, look, I think for that dog, putting the prong collar on, and we also call it a pinch collar, prong for how it looks, pinch for how it works. Um, When we put it on the dog, we went for a walk, and the dog immediately stayed next to us. Why? It's because, as you said, it's used for. We don't use it as punishment. We use it for negative reinforcement. The dog goes in front. We apply the pressure. The dog comes next to us. We release the pressure. Well, he, we he, the he, he's applying it himself, really, isn't he? You know, when well, he becomes self-correcting, but you have to know to release it though. Yeah. So he can get to the end of the lead. We hold it, but if we don't release it when the dog comes into the desired space, I um, mean, place next to you, then the dog doesn't know how to turn it off. 
when you put a prong collar on, all the prongs have to sit on evenly in the dog's neck. So when you apply the pressure, all of them are touching at the same time yep. to increase the surface area of there, it. And there is a, there's also loose. two rings as well. Oh, go on. We can talk about that in a sec. Yeah. If you have it on loose, then only three or four of the prongs are touching and that would be very undesirable to the dog and then the dog won't understand it. And you can desensitize the dog to it and then that when the dog starts mm. pulling against it. But in all the years of using it with all the client's dogs, um, all the dogs that we've worked on and it's been very, very successful. I haven't even seen a scratch on a dog's neck. I haven't seen a dog get bruised. I haven't seen the dog being hurt. If anything, it's more humane than using a flat collar or a martingale collar because it actually works, number one. And second of all, it hasn't choked dogs and it's saved dogs' lives. Mm. And people can control their dogs, communicate to them. So I think pinch collar is a better name for it too. And then there's two there's two rings, right? So they call it like an active ring and a dead ring, is it? So if you if you clip if you if you clip both of the O rings, then it really is a prong collar because the the prongs can't like they can't get any closer together. So the pinching They're action is stopped. Yes. Yeah. Then it actually is just like I don't know like for me and excuse my ignorance, but I don't know why you would put both of them on. No. I have to do some research on that or someone has to tell me. Um, so really yeah, you should only right. be fitting the one the one O-ring so that when, when you pull, it's like the martingale where the, 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 the two D-rings get closer and the and the prongs actually have a chance to to pinch together and, exactly. and, and it around the neck. distributes it. Yeah. But also if you put it on the wrong ring and you pull it from underneath the plates, then that doesn't run smoothly, doesn't release. So yes. normally there's an orange little thing on it and it's that's marked, the one that you yeah. should click it on. Um, but yeah, man, so like, look, they're not sharp. It never, man, like it just, it works really well. And I guess, what else can I say about it? Is there that, is that you know, photo that floats around of the, there was a dog that had seemed to have, you know, it's 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 used like by holes people in, in, a, in opposition to the prong collar and it had holes. The, the, the two probably things that could have happened there is either one it's just been left on and there's like necrosis where the the, yeah. the prongs have actually grown into the skin or have yeah. you know been well, the dog's too long. into it or someone yeah, yeah that too or someone some sick fuck has actually sharpened them but they're blunt if you buy them you, you, well, you put it on my arm when you first time you showed it to me and yeah. you, you pulled it as hard as you could it just it's just pressure it doesn't hurt yeah yeah no they're very blunt anyway look like each each of their own and everyone can have a different opinion about it. Um, and most people that have an opinion about it, a negative one, don't have, have never used it. Look, I have an I think and most, most people who are opposed to these kinds of tools, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say it um, without naming names. They're the kind of people that would rather send a dog to its death at the vet rather than uh, explore the options. That is of, liter yeah. literally, death literally before. Go, no, I rather, yeah, I would kill that dog. I'll give him capital punishment before using a tool that look, I had, I had people that were recommending me heaps recommending me. Like I'm in crazy amount. And I was like, wow, I was really grateful for them. And, um, one of my clients, she had the biggest dog I've ever seen. I swear to God, it was the hugest dog. And the martingale just simply didn't work. And she was getting pulled over and everything. And we worked with the mart with the pinch collar. We, um, we, we showed, and I, and I would never, ever give a pinch collar and just go, Hey, buy this and use it. Never, mm -hmm. ever, not even a martingale collar. You have to be shown how to use it. And before you even get one, that's my, my deal. I never just give it to anybody hard, hard rule. Um, and I told her, look, pencils and sell them luckily because people would just be using them and just thrash it like anything else. Not good. Um, and she, and anyway, I'll go, if you want one, let me know. And I can show you where you can get one. She went to the pet store that recommended me like crazy. And then she asked them and she, and then the, one of the girls there, like one of the owners or whatever, I'm freaked out. I was so upset. Wow, my cards are gone. And I heard, I heard that, oh, you know, so-and-so is upset with you. So I went there and I spoke to him like, hey, what's up? And then I was accused of, I put barbed wire on dogs necks and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, look, you know, like I get it. It's controversial, especially if you don't see it. And I love dogs. Why would I want a dog to be hurt or injured or anything? That makes no sense. It's the opposite. I prefer I that it, than the dog being put down because people weren't willing to explore other options. I'm like, look, come with me to the sessions literally tomorrow. Come for the whole time, no charge, nothing. Just watch. I go and see, see it. Don't even, not even to change your mind, just to see that what you think I am or what I'm doing is not that. 100% not that. Um, and I go, have you even touched one or seen one she goes no and i'm like how can you say something about something without even 
having an experience. It just makes no sense to me. And the problem is, is that the reason why she doesn't want me to use it and the reason why I want to use it are for the exact same reason is for <laughs> the dog to have his best life. How's that for ironic? <laughs> It's Mate, crazy. that's the world we live in now. I think people, a lot of people forming a lot of opinions, uneducated opinions on things that they've never seen, but they're quite willing to dismiss them. With, anyway. Totally. Totally. All right. So that's a prong collar. We can probably... Uh, one more thing. And hours. so for our Victorian listeners, you know, a lot of them probably already know they are illegal in Victoria. So you, you're not allowed to use yeah. them. Look, this is a big hard truth is that who knows when... You know, hopefully, hopefully things like this and us talking about it and us not hiding about using it is that if we stop talking about it because we're worried about people telling us off, then that does not do it justice. We're there to for the dogs, you know, so and if it's helping the dogs um, and I won't use a check chain because I think a dog's gonna, like if people aren't going to use it correctly, but it's either a martingale collar or, or, or a pinch collar for me generally. And it's been working and I have to make sure that I'm giving it to somebody who's not going to just abuse it. Just like I wouldn't, if I feel that someone's going to use abuse a martingale collar or even abuse their dog, then I'll change my tactics and then get them to use it if they're incapable. So it's really important that whoever's recommending them or even who's, whoever's listening and wants to use one, get somebody who knows how to use it and to teach it to you. Don't just go wing it just like anything else. I don't think you should put a flat collar on a dog without using it properly, but flat collars are pretty standard um, and they're not exotic, you know? So I guess, um, you know, it, it could, if it saves lives and if it helps the dogs, then I'm all for it. And that's what it is to me anyway. So, um, yeah, and I'm open for discussion. If you want to get on the show and we can have a chat and we can fully go right into it. And I'll even bring a dog and show it. I'll even get a client that he's even got one on their dog and was probably unsure. This is how it is. When I think that I have to make the call and go, hey, look, I think we should use his collar. Most people are like, mm, ah, okay, I don't know. Let's just have it, give it a go if that's what you, they trust me. 90%, 99% of people, like that's not, that's not a number, but like everybody that I decide that I think they need, they say, where do I get one from? Every single time because it fucking works. And they're like, oh, my dogs never walk so nicely and happy too. And not choking. So very important. I think Pat told a story on one of their episodes. I remember him saying this, um, you know, just talking about, the education of you know sort of of your clients and i think he was saying one of his clients it took her maybe a year nine months or something yeah. it was a let's call it a year or nine months mm. a long fucking mm. time to come around to the idea of using a prong collar and then they fixed the issue within a week or two weeks and yeah. i think he was saying she she was crying because she was so happy you know mm. yeah totally. so look you know like it's all education it, just like a car, man. Everyone's freaking out that dogs are getting hurt. Like, who, which dogs are getting hurt from somebody who's trying their best to train their dog? Like, who's getting hurt? Why don't we just ban cars because dogs die from getting hit by cars? <laughs> like, seriously. You know what I mean? Like, we have to be more realistic. You can't just go pick and cherry pick what to be pissed off about when all of us have good intentions and trying to do the right thing. So, you know, we're wasting our time fighting amongst each other. Um, people that agree disagree and we should be sticking together so we can educate the masses instead of wasting mm. our energy and like, i don't get involved with any of that shit man because i'm not interested in it i'm interested and in also those people aren't change. paying you you'd be better off spending you spending your time on people that are actually paying you rather than wasting that, it on people on the internet that's true too um halty i don't use a halty very often or it's a gentle leader some sometimes it's called a, it's a brand actually but it's a ropey sort of nylon material that goes around the dog's nose and wraps around the dog's neck and it's used for negative reinforcement to pull the dog off balance um, or shift its head in certain positions to make it uncomfortable to pull. Um, my, I generally don't use halties. I'm not a big fan. Two reasons. Um, three reasons. You have to condition the animal to un or the dog to understand what the halty is. You can't, I don't believe you should just whack it on the dog and go, cool, go for a walk because the dog's going to scratch at it, freak out. Like, what have you just put on my face and put pressure on? It's ridiculous. Um, so you got to condition them properly so they understand what it is. And then you have to show them how it's the function of it. So it takes a bit of time. Number two is that if the dog keeps on pulling, you're not doing it correctly and you've desensitized the dog to the tool and they can cut their, um, around the base of their muzzle or where the eyes are, and you can cut the dog's eyes. And even worse, number three is that if the dog goes to pull real hard and you're using it like punishment, or if you don't not using it correctly you could do spinal column damage to their neck mm -hmm. you know, like because you're really leveraging their face yeah. and like so yeah. much worse than collar being around the neck at least around the neck 
the dog can like counteract it. We're around the face. If the dog's freaking out, trying to get it's out weird, of it. It's weird, right? Like the, I guess the prong collar kind of, yeah, the, it, it's, yeah, it's the ugly duckling really. Like it's not a good look, but then you can go and put a halter on a dog and maybe cause heaps more problems than you would with a prong, with a pinch collar. But then someone, like I've seen like people, like I was at the markets the other day and some guy had a pinch collar really loose, really low on this like, you know, Belgium, um, Belgium Shepherd or, or something, or was he a shepherd? And the dog was just pulling right into it, didn't even give a shit about it. So, you know, it was, um, you know, it. The right and the tool in the wrong pulling. hands and the wrong, yeah. you know. Don't don't blame the tool, blame the fool, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, Holti, look, I can work. And some people are like, hey, I really want to use a Holti. And I'm like, cool. And I show it to them and I know how to use it. And I'm not that against it, but I get different results different ways. Um, but Holti can work if if you choose to go that way. Just, you know, you cannot use it for punishment, like a pop. You probably could, but not advisable. It's more for pressure, pressure release. Um you want to say anything about the whole team? I don't, to be honest, I don't really know anything about it. Yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, that's that. Um, I'm sure, again, if someone who actually uses it wants to talk more about that, open for that. Um, a flat lead, pretty, um, again, if you want to know more about the flat lead, listen to one of that earliest episode, one of the first Q and A's we were talking about equipment. Um, and if you look at the video on our um, like Facebook or Instagram, I actually show you, different flat leads just get a good one a good flat lead doesn't have too many gimmicks on it too many rings on it you know just a lead that has a good strong buckle good stitching get a flat good reputable brand lead, yeah yeah if you don't you know, buy cheap just, shit you'll pay for yeah. it later leather ones are good too i like, I like le- leather leads um you know they last a long time if you look after them somewhere between um, four and six foot is a good length generally they're 120 centimeters or 180 right yeah i i i think six foot's pretty pretty long i'd go like my like the leads that I use generally are like maybe one point, yeah, one point three or something one yeah. meter. Um, but anyway, up to you. Just the longer the lead means you got to like when I'm walking on a lead, I want the dog next to me. I don't want the dog, yeah, far from me. Um, that's how I use it anyway. Every each of their own. Um, slip lead is a lead that. Um, kind of looks like a check chain, but it's all just one lead. It has a ring at the end of a rope, and then the end of the lead goes through the ring and it makes a slip or like a lasso yeah. it's basically a leash um, and a collar in one like you don't need a yeah. collar on top of the slip lead it is it serves yeah. both functions slip leads good again i don't teach my clients to use slip leads because they, i just have a fear that they're going to f- fail miserably and the dog gets off it mm. um, same as the check chain it has to be fitted that that p for proper so the the long yeah. the leash portion should go across from if he's on your left, it goes across, over, the top, yeah, of the over the top of the dog and then underneath his underneath. neck. Yeah, yeah rather than starting the underneath and going over the top. I have a slip lead in my car and you can make any lead a slip lead. You just put the buckle at the end of the, like through the loop and it becomes a slip lead. I have one in my car all the time because I've used it heaps of times. If I see a dog in the middle of the road or a stray running around, I grab that and that's my my, my quick way of getting a dog on a lead with yeah. that. Yeah, because I don't want to use them all in like boarding kennels and stuff, right? Because it's quick. Yeah. If you fit it in like one second, literally. That, that's that's where I use it. if I'm and I tell like when I worked at the shelter always had one and any kennel all the kennels always had a slip lead on on off it's real quick and not messing around with collars that just makes no sense um but people can use it for training and there's perfect training um technique I mean like um reasons to use it but um I, again when we're talking about teaching the, the general public um dog owners what's your concerns with first. the general dog owners what do you think they could do wrong with it I don't know, man. Like it just, you just have it too loose or just like relax the lead and the dog somehow can slip out of it. Like it, there's more, it can fail quicker and better than, I mean, it will fail more likely than having a Martin Gale collar on. Um, and I feel there's probably more, more easier for, for the Martin Gale, especially with the chain on it. Cause then I can apply pressure. The dog can hear it. Um, it's more sturdy. It won't come off. Um, I know you can get slip leads and then the, the butt goes down. So then it can't open too much, like completely. And maybe, maybe I change my mind, mm. maybe one day for sure. But um, I found something that works and I'm just sticking with it, you know. That's it, um, man. Use what works. Yeah. But again, slip lead, when I was looking after dogs in the yard, I used a slip lead to grab on the dog, take it at the back. I take him off. Um, it's good for that. Um, and there's times where I've had to walk a dog because, and then the lead doesn't, like there's no lead on the dog and I use it as a slip lead. So, but um. But yeah, 
A long lead is like a must. Everyone needs a 10 meter long lead for their dog. So anyone you don't really see it, but I, unless they've probably been trained by you around the, <laughs> around the Shire, drive, around the St. George. If we're driving anywhere <laughs> and they have a long lead, usually it's yeah, we've done training. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. practical though, man. Like it's such a, once you see it and you, and you realize you're like, fuck, it's such a no brainer. Like, why wouldn't you do it? Back in the day before I knew anything about dogs, I was just me and Rocky and I'd literally bought three or four leads and just clipped them all together. And that was my <laughs> long lead. Like, cause, and I was always like, my good mate, it's a no brainer. What do you mean? Of course I've got a longer lead so I can control the dog. Um, make sure it's nylon. If it's any other material, it can be heavy and it can be hard on the hands. Um, there's a bit of safety to it. You should definitely watch. Um, there's a video on, on my um, Nutris Pooch's YouTube channel about a few different things about the long lead. So go check that out, how to wrap it up and how to use it and some safety um, points to it. Um, I've got a few scars around my ankles from, from long leads. Um, so it can really kind of mess you up. But I use a long lead for free time. We walk to the park, we give the dog free time, pee poo, play sniff, have his time to do um, whatever he feels like doing. And we use it for recall training and long sit stays and down stays. Um, it's a no brainer. It just makes 10 no meters, sense. Yeah. 10, 10 meters. You can go longer, but anything shorter is kind of sucky. I want something a little bit long. Um, and look after i've got one that's like seven 30 eight feet for our american listeners we actually got quite a few americans 33 foot 33, 33 foot sorry yes that's yeah. right 3.3 <laughs> isn't yeah we've got a lot of americans listening to us now so yeah <laughs> hey hey y'all um and what else oh i don't like retractable leads um personally for many reasons flexies so. yeah the flex lead um why i don't know just do I have to talk about it? Should I tell why I don't like it? Well, I guess yeah, go into it. I'm not a fan um, either. I don't rate them at all. Yeah. Look, I think um, if I was a police officer searching someone's car um, and it's on the side of the road, I get my dog out. I have him on a flex lead. I tell the dog to search. You can go around the car. That is practical. I think they just have so I think the coppers, you, they only just put them on long lines anyway, right? So Yeah, but like a long lead, then he's going around the car. The long lead kind of gets stuck under the tire and does yeah. weird shit and you're on the side of the main road. Uh, the flex lead can work really well. There's many functions of where it can work well. It has no good function when you're Jane down the street with her little Maltese and then she's letting a dog walk fucking everywhere on the street. You're teaching the dog she's... not to not never to be next to you as well. That's well, like thing. it's just annoying for everyone. Like no one cares about you and your dog running everywhere and getting like in the, in the way of people and getting stuck under people's feet and between people's dogs. And it's just annoying. Second of all, I've seen clients show me their hands two in the last three years and have no um, ring finger because the, Flexi lead went and wrapped around her finger and took a finger oh, off. They actually lost the, a whole the, finger. The, You're kidding. The, like like half of the finger. Like she showed gone. me hand like that. Gone, gone. Yeah, too so late to get it like sur surgery and everything. Yeah, one of them had to like at the end of a toe and put it on there, and the other one just kind of they just fixed it. And then the one of the husbands had to go and try to find the finger in the park. It was intense. Um, and I think also you want to have one that. Like, you know, like, can you trust a break in it? The dog's running. you got a big dog. Is it going to yeah. stop? There's, a, there's, just, for me, there's too many variables, man. Like, there's too much that can go wrong. And you you buy, like, a cheap one. It's the same as anything, but with particularly the more moving parts that are in a flexi, like the, the, the retractor stops working or the brake doesn't well, like, work. or They give you a handle, but that's not very comfortable to hold. Like, like you're a holding a handle plastic. now. It's weird. We're like, I like to hold the rope. I know what I'm holding of my dog. I can see it. I can drop it on the floor. You can't drop a flexi on the lead on the ground so he can walk around. And like with my long line, I can drop the dog. If I'm in a massive, massive park, I can see around. I can step on the lead if I need to. I can grab it if it falls out my hand. Like there's more more practicality for me. Yeah, it's a bit more bulky. And it is, it's cool that a retractable lead can retract and not get tangled and stuff. I can see the pros. But just have a bit of common sense and a bit of practicality and you're going to be cool. Um, and not to hurt yourself. That's some of our harness collars leads. Um, and I like a flat. We'll talk about the flat lead real quick. I like a flat. I don't like ropes. I don't like things that have like where the buckle is and where the loop is. There's plastic over it. Why are they hiding the stitching? Like why does it have to be a stupid plastic thing? Like it, maybe it makes it look good possibly but usually when you take that plastic off it's a couple of dodgy stitches and some glue um i like a flat lead where i can see nice solid stitching like nice strong buckle um i generally use um the rogs again 
Um, I've never had one fail on me, so that's why. Um, and I've got good brass buckled um, leather leads that that thing. Like those are my favorite. But yeah, most people don't want to pay fifty bucks for a lead. Also, one I didn't write down before we started. Um, chain like chain chain actual chain based leashes. Oh, chain leads. Tell well, that story. Um, I don't. You can. Um, oh, okay, cool. So we. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah. So when I was hold- uh, first of all, I don't like a chain lead because it's just shit in the hands. It's so it makes your hand sore, especially if your dog's pulling, if you're using frankfurts or other food, it's very slippery. Um, and as I was explaining to a client one day, she had an American staffy and I was holding the chain lead. And, I, and I, as I was explaining, like, I don't like it because of X, Y, and Z, the dog pulled like she was in front and then she saw like a bird or something and then ran back. And then the lead went over my thumb but then I went to go pull against it. So I clenched my hand and my thumb from with the corner of the nail all the way down to like, what's that? That first section, that first like joint, to yeah. joint to the joint, just sliced it in half. It was oh. like open. And I'm like, ah, as I'm explaining why I hate it or not like, why I didn't like it. She's like, what the hell? And I'll get, anyway, I just first aid kit me. I just, bah, just shoved it together with the bandages and it was all good. My thumb still works, but, um, but that's why I don't like it. Um, so enough said, right? Um, people get it because the dog chews the end of the lead. Like, oh, my dog keeps chewing. I'm like, well, then put a yeah, well, corrective collar on the dog and then correct the dog not to do it. Um, but I get it. But then also the dog's chewing it on the metal. It's going to break his teeth on the chain. So mm. now obviously before the dog hurts itself, he stops because it sucks. Um, but yeah, that's why I don't like it. Now it looks badass for sure. You're walking a big, strong dogs and you've got chains everywhere. I get it. It looks cool. It looks badass, but. It's not the functional. I think what Sorry, looks bad. I walk in his German Shepherd the other way, other day down King George's Road, and when I say walking, I mean the fucking dog was walking him. So he had the thing it was on a harness first of all, and mm-hmm. then it was on a chain lead with like a looked like it had like either like a fabric or kind of leather handle on the other end, mm-hmm. and this dog was just dragging this guy down dragging. the street like he was mm. he was barely managing. He was a big dude, and he was barely managing to stay upright. Yeah. Well, another thing about harnesses I didn't say is that if your dog's like weight pulling or you know he's a tracking dog and there's uh, some function to wear the harness he's wearing the harness get yeah, a good harness the cops use that like, when they're when they're working the dog yeah. knows as soon as the harness goes on that he's yeah. tracking harness is a good tool but just for getting control over your american staff you're walking down the street even a front clip harness can like hurt them underneath their armpits and like cut them open because they haven't got the best skin and they're pulling so much there's lots of pressure and resistance so yeah um if you want your okay, dog I've to got, pull then put him on a harness that's it. Straight you up. might want that, and more maybe power you want to it. You. Cool, man. Awesome. It's your extra workout. Um, even if I'm like riding my bike or rollerblading, dogs are on my loose lead next to me while I'm running. There is no pulling of me while I'm on a bike. That is like so dangerous, especially on rollerblades. It's like a, that's a death trap. One thing I see a, a lot is um, like a you know a young mum with a pram and a new baby, and then it's pretty obvious that they've had the dog a lot longer than the baby because it's an adult fully grown let's mm-hmm. say a lab or something or whatever it is and it's like pulling her down the street and mm. so, and then now she's got a brand new baby and a dog that has learned to hit the end of the line and pull even harder and then now yeah. she's trying to manage the pram and and a dog that's dragging it down yeah. the street which can be exactly dangerous disastrous I see it all the time yeah so let's um Quickly, just read out what we'll cover, and we'll do it. We'll do a second half of this for next. And we'll time. say bye to you now, but we're going to continue, and then you can listen to this later. Yeah. So um, we have a clicker, a tug, a ball, a treat pouch, a crate, an X pen, and a muzzle is what I have here, and yeah, whatever awesome. else will come to mind as we're talking. Yeah. Wow. So, that, I guess <laughs> that that filled more time than I thought it was going to. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess thanks for listening to us, and when you listen to the next episode after the next Q and A that comes out, you'll listen to the rest of this conversation. That's Love part one. Yeah. So like so much equipment and even this and the next episode is not exhaustive. Obviously there's a million different pieces of um, yeah. dog equipment, um, but we're just covering the ones that we can tend to one. use. Yeah. One. yeah, exactly.